These boots, these are at least 15 years old. Um, they were brown, I painted them black. Uh, as I say, the more worn out they are, and the more they fit your feet like a glove, the better, because you have more control. Um, the sole is not too grippy and not too slippy, so that I can jump and I can move from foot to foot without slipping over. But I can also do skiddy moves if I need to, yeah? So I can go both ways with that. Um, so they're the main dancing shoes. I've got about three of those, the other two are in, in England. Um, but they're all really old, they're like antique items in themselves. Um, yeah, shirt, I just would like to wear a shirt that um, will stand out in the dark club. So I often wear a white shirt. Um, or I remember the last time at the Otto Wagner I wore this red shirt. Um, when it gets really hot, I might take off my shirt and I'll have just a little vest like this. Oh, sorry, we got a microphone disaster. <laughs> so, yeah, do you need me to do that bit again? Please, yeah. Okay, so uh, I just go from if it gets too hot, yes? Oops, it's so hot. Yeah, so, and, and if it gets too hot, then I take off the shirt and I just dance in my vest. I've got various vests in various colours depending on the mood and what I feel like. But um, yeah, I suppose the main thing about the clothes that I wear when I go dancing is simplicity and comfort. And uh, they have to look good, but if, if they look good and you can't move in them, forget it. I might sometimes go to a club with um, like clothes that look really good or, you know, like at the moment these skinny jeans are in. I've got a pair of them. I, I, I went to a club in those the other day and I, I couldn't dance in them, I had to go and get changed, you know. So, so yeah, clothes that are comfortable um, and you can move easily in. And shoes as well, always take a variety of shoes. Uh, that's it, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Nicht zu nahe kommen.
Warte. Okay, stop a minute. Yeah, yeah, sure. A different track? Um, <coughs> yes. Um, we have to think about yeah, this. The main thing was that, that this. Uh, dancing figures. Do you know about and know how to move? It's complex. I don't know. Okay. Oh, sorry, no, it's, it's sorry. not just for the camera, it's for me because I don't know how many. I don't know. Uh -huh. and, and most of them don't have names. Uh -huh, most okay. of them. Uh, moves that I have either made up myself or I've seen other people doing moves and thought that's good I'd like to do that and I try to do it myself but I'd never one never had went and had Northern Soul lessons it doesn't exist you just go to the clubs you look you absorb the atmosphere you get the excitement and you have a go and everyone says ah, look at him he's terrible get him off you know and that's what it's like in the beginning and you trip up and you bump into people and make an idiot of yourself. You do that for about five years and then you start getting a feeling for it. That's kind of how it was with me anyway. Um, I mean, the thing about Northern Soul is it is very solitary dancing. The, you know, the dancer goes into a world of his own. He's not really relating to the other dancers that much. He's relating to the music and it's, it's a kind of an emotional and physical release. So most of the moves, even though lots of people do a similar sort of thing like this, sort of basic thing, this is my version of, of what you'd call the soul walk, I suppose, and it's a sort of basic step. You can do it fast or slow, depending on the tempo of the record, you know, but it, it just relates to that basic four beats in a bar. And, you know, whatever breaks are going on or anything, you can always just come back to that and you kind of relax into it. Um, and uh, other steps, um, you've got your spin, which is just when you get to an emotional or exciting part of the, the record and you want to let go a little bit, you know, and there's ways of doing spins, you just find your own way. Most people do it on one leg, I do it on, I don't know, part of the time on one and part of the time on the other. Uh, if you notice, most of my steps are not symmetrical. So I, you know, nothing kind of adds up. It doesn't make any sense except when you look at the whole thing. Uh, what else could I show you? Well, that's the basic kind of steppy moves. There's another one that I do that's kind of side to side like that. Uh, as in more funky records, you start getting into all this kind of stuff. Uh, and then there's some really fast footwork that you can do to sort of 70s stompy records. Things that are on the edge of funk music, really. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot of st steps also from jazz fusion clubs. And some of them do have names, like this one called the Cockroach Stomp, which is like this. Because you, you're jumping and stamping and it looks like you're treading on an in insect. The cockroach stomp. That's that. It looks alright, but it's really a kind of a move that you do when you need a breath. Because it doesn't take that much energy. It looks good, but it doesn't take a lot of energy. This Northern Soul stomp that I'm doing now, that takes a lot more energy. And it's much harder to maintain. So you have to mix it in with other stuff. That's your classics of a northern floor work. You can go into splits, or you can go round and up. Like that. And back into splits.
The classic backdrop, I don't really do very often. Uh, that was big in the days of Wigan. I think it might have something to do with the drugs they were taking. Because it made everyone like this. And they're going sort of... Oh, I'm joking, but it's a bit like that. And then the backdrop was like... Whoa. Yeah? And then back up. For me, to be honest, it's a bit slow and clumsy. It doesn't really fit in with my other moves. Unless I change it and go around so I can go whee! And then and up. Then it makes sense. But the sort of classic old wing and backdrop I don't really do. Oh. What else would I show? Um, the talcum powder, which yeah, the talcum powder. This is like Superman and his kryptonite. It's the worst thing for a for a good dancer. Sorry, I'll start again. Yeah, yeah talcum powder. This is like Superman and kryptonite. It's like the worst enemy of anyone that's really into their dancing, because what it actually does is it takes away control. It takes away your ability to grip the floor and keep your balance. You know, people get this misconception. They think, Northern Soul, it's all these sort of skiddy moves. So you've got to have something to make the floor more slippery. And it's usually the people that are less confident and less capable in their dancing that are wanting to use it. Because it means they can slide about a bit and they look good, but they're not really dancing and they're not in time with the tune. The tune. Talcum powder means you go out of time, because you're skidding all the time. But you can do moves that look skiddy, but actually, you're completely in control. I'm not skidding, I might look like I'm skating, but I'm not. I'm gripping the floor. And for spins, and coming out of the spin without falling over, you need grip, you need control. Do you know? So it's the terrible stuff. And I have to go around with a glass of water putting it on the floor to get rid of the towel so that I can dance. And any dancer will tell you the same. Can't dodge all their people. They don't use the towel. No one uses it. And jazz dancers, if you put talc down at Jazz Fusion do in England, you will be lynched. You will be thrown out of the club. Boom. Just like that. I never have done my best performance in a competition because I can't reach that zone of not giving a fuck about anything. And that's when you do your best dancing. You do your best dancing in a little corner of a club and no one's watching you but maybe a few people sitting in the corner and that's it. And you just get that zone and you're at one with yourself somehow. Um, I did do one dancing competition when there was it was promoting a film that was related to Northern Soul about three years ago at Marble Arch. Can't remember the name of the film or the venue or anything. And uh, I took part in it and I just did my stuff. You know, and I made sure that I did all the moves, but I didn't get any feeling. And then I went to the toilet and I came back and my friend said, where were you? You just won first prize. I said, oh, I went to the toilet. Oh, no, they've given it to this girl now who can't even dance at all. And uh, they gave it to some, actually, she was quite a good dancer, really. But they gave it to her, and they gave me the second prize, which was some money, I think. A bit of money and some stuff that I didn't want, like badges and things like that. <laughs> yeah. I think that's all I've got to say about them, really. Right. Dancing right. competitions. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So here it is, isn't it? Round here.
films. Ghosts do exist. This record is a ghost of a performance that happened in the 1930s. Records are ghosts. So are paintings. Ghosts are spooky. Sorry? Ghosts are spooky. Ghosts are spooky, so are paintings. <laughs> so are records sometimes. This is a brilliant record. It's not so much spooky as it's a bit like a circus or something. Must be out of condition. <laughs> this is really difficult to do that. This is so much more exhausting than to these that it becomes really relaxing and lovely to dance to a normal soul record. So all partner dancing, which is something that I don't do that much, but I'm trying to learn to do a little bit. Uh, except for these two, which are drawings I made of a jazz dance group called Jazzcatech, led by Perry Louis. And I went and drew, drew them when, when they were rehearsing. Uh, when I came to Vienna, I had an exhibition at Gallery Stock in Vienna. And for the opening night, 